Hello everybody, Will Burney here. I'm a semester 25 alum and teach carving at the Outdoor Academy. We're excited to see you this next semester. Uh, I'm gonna show you guys a few carving techniques, a few knife grips, and a few uh, safety pointers. All right, we'll start with the first cut, the big push cut. Um, you'll notice that my knife is all choked up in my hand, pretty close to the blade there. That's gonna give me some control and more strength. And my holding hand is, of course, behind the blade, for this cut at least. So we're just going to basically start by taking, it's easier to take off the corners first instead of trying to do a whole big flat section. But just nice and easy. I've kind of got my elbow tucked into my side, and I'm pushing with my shoulder mostly. Um, and just nice and easy. A few things to remember, if you are struggling to make your cut, chances are you either have a dull knife or you're trying to take too big of a bite. So it should always be pretty nice and simple. Um, if you're struggling, stop and assess and see, what, see what's amiss. So, yep, that's uh, with this cut, you can, you can really lean into it and take, take big cuts. Um, you can go smaller. This is really for just removing a bunch of wood at once to get your initial shape. Another thing to keep in mind is instead of keeping your blade perpendicular to the direction of the cut, it's handy to kind of give it a slant and uh, that can just help you out. We call that skewing the blade, kind of like a guillotine. So this is the big push cut, really basic, just sitting on your porch, shaving the bark off of a hiking stick or something like that, you know? Okay, cut number two. This is the most complicated cut, uh, but it's also the most useful cut. So I don't want anybody doing this unless they've sat down with me or somebody who really knows how to do this cut first. To practice a little bit. It's not one that you want to learn by trial and error on your own. Um, so essentially, I call it the violin cut. Uh, we're going to brace the piece against our chest and with our pointer finger of our holding hand. So what we want to do is, for safety for this cut, you want to have both of your palms facing upwards. And that's just a general rule that will keep the knife pointing away from you and your digits out of harm's way. So. You want to always keep that thumb kind of tucked down underneath, again, on the opposite side of the wood as your blade. And to start with, you can hide these three fingers as well, so you've got everything tucked under and a nice hard clamp. So we will come down here, and you always want to have, again, your elbow tucked in, palm facing the sky, the blade is facing away from your body, okay? It makes a lot more sense than carving like this. So, blade's facing away, and I'm just gonna engage the wood nice and slow. And you'll see immediately my fingers wanna jump up and start helping, which is fine, that's what you wanna do. Um, so, thumb is out of the way. These three fingers are on the back of my carving hand, assisting with control and a little bit of strength. Um, and you just, You'll notice that I kind of do some windshield wiper stuff, but if I get close to my body, we're always going to keep, keep the blade facing out. So this cut can be either very delicate, you can get tiny little delicate spirals, or you can really get some good, nice strength behind it as well. Um, this is by far the most versatile cut that you'll have in your repertoire so I encourage anybody starting carving to become really comfortable and good at this cut because it will help you move a lot faster. All right cut number three here um, the first of my two small cuts that I like to teach so for this one the knife doesn't have to be your hand doesn't have to be totally up next to it you can kind of be a little bit more lenient of how you hold it. 
and I call this the little squeeze cut or the little push cut. And essentially, you're going to grip the piece close to where you're working on it, and your thumb will be free. And then you just set the knife with your knife hand where you want it, set the knife, and then all you do is squeeze with your holding hand. So if you'll notice, my right hand and the knife really aren't moving at all. The only thing that's making this work is my left hand rotating the stick and squeezing the knife. And again, you want to take small bites and be gentle with your thumb here. This one can lead you to some calluses and uh, blisters if you're a little overzealous. But this is a really nice cut for small detail and for kind of zeroing in on some more difficult curves. And as you can see here, it's great for, for rounding off in grain um, and just kind of smaller detail-y cuts. You can use it down on the big part of the stick too, just uh, kind of get a little windshield wiper action going. So, yep, that's the little push cut. All right, cut number four, which I like to call the little pull cut. Um, one thing that's different is the knife is now facing me, more or less. Uh, so it's laying the blade facing the sky in my hand while my palm is also facing the sky. And I'm just gonna grab it like so. And so for this one, this is kind of how you might have seen people slice apples or whatnot, but um, really all the action is in your knuckles. So obviously you don't want to pull the knife at your thumb. So we're just going to have our thumb off to the side. So when you're cutting on the wood, you're going to again hold close to where you're working um, and place your thumb on the opposite side of where your blade is making contact. Of course, you always want to keep wood between the knife and your thumb. So in this one, you just kind of make your way around and set your knife where you want it. Squeeze your hand, squeeze your fist closed. And again, you just kind of do a small little cut, rotate the piece, small little cut, rotate. Nice and easy. You can see it's not coming close to my thumb at all. And this is really more useful on in grain or the tips of spoons or rounding off, rounding off in grain pretty much. Um, and it's, you get a lot of the same effect as with the little push cut but I promise you every now and then it's more handy to come at it from the other way. So it's good to know how to do both. All right, let's uh, just go over a few additional safety tips. Um, first and foremost, if you're not comfortable with what you're doing, don't force it. Don't sit there and carve in a way that makes you feel unsafe just because everybody else is doing it. Stop, put your knife in your sheath, ask for some, some help. Um, these blades are super duper sharp. They're designed to cut through hard wood and they will open your hand up very easily. Um, so treat these knives with a lot of respect. When you're carving, you wanna be quite aware of your proximity to others. Um, and that's mainly because every now and then you'll slip and you want to be aware of where your blade is going to go should you slip and kind of fully extend your arm. Safety tip number three, uh, it goes back to what I was saying earlier about taking too big of a chunk or bite as I like to call it. So if you're carving and you find yourself hitting a spot that uh, makes you really struggle and you kind of start to shake and you're really trying to push through it, that's dangerous. You build up a bunch of energy and then it releases all at once and we don't want to do that. So if you ever find yourself struggling in a cut, stop, take your knife out and just take a smaller bite. It's fine. It'll, uh, you'll still finish your carving, I promise. We just want this to be nice and easy and safe. There's no reason to try and power through any of this. So nice and easy does the trick. Oh, see, there I go. Just back out, take some smaller bites, and then that big one will come right off. Nice and easy does the trick. 
All right, everybody, thanks for watching. Hope you learned a few things. Uh, look forward to seeing you. What are you doing? Mm -hmm. Don't mess up the microphone now. Watch out, watch out. Hey, we're filming. You're wasting our film. Safety tip number four. If you find yourself struggling with the end grain, you can always just put your knife away and you can chew it. And chew it up works really good if you don't want to use your knife.